Hello valued viewers, I hope you're all doing very well. Today we're in the F-15E Strike Eagle and we're looking at close range within visual range air-to-air -air radar auto acquisition mode, sometimes known as ACM modes. We've already covered the beyond visual range functions of the radar here. As a summary, there are five within visual range search modes. Super search, bore sight, long range bore sight, vertical scan, and guns. Super search mode scans a 20 by 20 degree area based around the bore sight of the aircraft in a six bath search pattern. It can scan from 500 feet up to 10 nautical miles. This mode has a secondary mode where we can actually move the search pattern up and down. Basic bore sight mode is a smaller, more refined mode that scans a four degree circle around the bore sight of the aircraft from 500 feet out to 10 nautical miles. The long range bore sight mode works similarly to bore sight but has a smaller search pattern but a longer range from 3000 feet up to 40 nautical miles. Vertical scan mode, especially useful in high off bore sight dogfighting, scans from the bore sight of the aircraft upwards plus 5 degrees to plus 55 degrees with a width of 7.5 degrees from 500 feet up to 10 nautical miles. And finally, guns mode provides a movable space stabilized search pattern with ranges of 0.5 to 15 nautical miles. First, let's look at the controls involved today, and there are not many. Auto acquisition switch forward to select some of the search patterns. Some of those will be short presses, less than a second. Some will be long presses of more than a second. Aft to attain other patterns. Press to unlock our target and cancel our single target tracks. Also, castle left to give soy to our air-to-air -air radar. Our setup is this. We're flying at 16,000 feet. Less than 10 miles off our nose is an easily identifiable C-130 at co altitude. We also have one off to our left at less than 40 miles, about 35 miles. There are some prerequisites to using these modes. First, our radar has to be turned on, obviously, and it is. Next, we have to be in air-to-air -air mode, master mode, which is there, so I need to push that. Now, it's already defaulted on. Finally, at least at this stage of the aircraft development, we must have our air-to-air -air radar selected in one of our MPDs and soy given to it. We must make it our sensor of interest. To do that, I'm going to push and hold castle left until we get the extra symbology showing that it is now soy. So I'm pause, castle left long. It is now soy. We've got these lines down the bottom here and the cursor has solid lines. We can now use our auto acquisition modes. Next, we can only select our auto acquisition mode from a range while search mode, which is what the default radar is in anyway. We cannot get to these modes if we have a single target track, an STT, or if we're in TWIS, TWS. So you must be in range while search. We know we're in range while search because we clearly don't have an STT and we do not have any of the TWIS legends down at the bottom of the B scope. The first mode we'll look at is super search. And I'm actually going to turn away from the hostile on purpose here because I don't want to lock him yet. With all those prerequisites in place, I'm going to press auto acquisition forward short. And we're now in super search. We can see the rough scan area in the HUD and it's this circle. Note, the radar is not magical. It can't just scan that entire circle in a millisecond. It takes several seconds for the radar to zip up and down in six bar pattern. So you do have to be patient with it. Also, we can see on our B scope that we are in super search mode. We're on bar three and our maximum scan range is 10 nautical miles. Note, if we push, and sorry, I forgot to show this, TDC down and up, we can actually move the super search zone up plus 28 degrees or down negative 19 degrees without having to aim the aircraft up or down. Let's put it back. Right, let's go and find a bad guy. All I've got to do is put a bad guy in that circle for a couple of seconds and it should pick them up. There he is. No, that's not him. Where is he? Is this one? There he is. It's picked him up. And let's look at the symbology. 
Needless to say, that's transferred the acquired target to a single target track. Note, it will just pick up the first target it comes to, whether that's a goodie or a baddie or a combat plane or a cargo plane, it doesn't care. So, in the B-scope, we can see we have a PDT shown by the star, a primary designated target. He's at 17,000 feet roughly. Accurately, he's at 16,500 feet. His vector is thus, we are there. There's our steering cue, that's what we aim towards for an optimal shot. He's at a closing velocity of 665 knots and his range of 10 is there, about 6 nautical miles. Also, his speed is 325 knots ground speed, his aspect is 170 degrees biased to the left. And his current vector from him to us is 265. Up in the HUD, a lot of that is repeated and these modes are all designed to be used from the HUD. I should mention, if I haven't, that today is not about weapons engagement, purely the radar, so no weapons today. Target designator box, encompassing target. Range scale, 0, 10. That's a dynamic range scale. He's there, about 6-ish miles. Closing velocity again. Altitude, 16,500 feet. Aspect, 170 left. Weapons information that we'll ignore at a range of 6.2 nautical miles. We can either shoot a missile at him, which we're not, or we can unlock him, which we will, with a short press of auto acquisition press. So let's do that now. That will return us to the search. And that is Super Search. Now on to Boresight. To get to Boresight, again, we start from Range While Search. And first we have to go through Super Search. So let's go Auto Acquisition forward. And again, we're now in Boresight. We're now searching this circle here. Because it's a smaller circle, it can search much quicker. So if you know where the target is, and you want a very accurate, quick search, use Boresight. We can see in the B-scope we have boresight selected. This is not movable, it's centered around the boresight of the aircraft. Well, let's go and get another lock. If we can. Finding him is always up. There he is. Got him. And exactly the same thing. We've transferred him through to an STT, blah, blah, blah. Next, long boresight. I'm going to reject this target with auto acquisition press. Boof. Okay, when I press auto acquisition press and reject the target, it puts me back to basic range while search, by the way. Next, I'm going to do long bore sight. So from our basic range while search, we're going to push and hold auto acquisition forward long, more than a second. Off we go. There we go. You can see it's a smaller circle because it's scanning further. Now, this is going to be a little bit difficult because I've got to try and visualize this guy. Let's see if we can get it to work. So I'm going to find him on 057 co-altitude. Let's see if we can get him. Oh, I've pretty much got no hope because I can't see. Oh, got him. <laughs> Look at that. Got him. Right. Um, that's it. Exactly the same. Obviously, it said long bore sights down in the B-scope here. And we've attained an STT. Next, why don't we try vertical scan? So I'm going to drop the lock with auto acquisition press. And in fact, you don't always have to go back to range while search to get into these modes. You can go from other modes, but to keep it super simple, I'm gonna go back to range while search. That said, that's not always the case. Some modes you can't get into other modes. And to be honest, it's probably just best if you have a play to see which modes you can get into other modes from. So vertical scan mode is going to be a short press of auto acquisition aft. And there we go. So it scans pretty much from the waterline here, up 55 degrees. This is what you use in a high off foresight dogfight, obviously. It scans about 7.5 degrees in thickness. It can take a few seconds to acquire the target, and it will get the first target it comes to within a range of 10 miles. And I suppose you want to see me do it, so I better go and try and find that guy again. Oh, guy. Got him. There he is. Pang. And unlock. Finally, guns. This one's a bit more complex. So what I'm going to do is make sure I am in range while search, which I am. Next, and I forgot this again because I am me, I'm going to select the gun with weapons, mode switch, aft, guns. I'm going to do that. 
with all the prerequisites we've said so far. We're now in guns mode. Note in the B scope it says guns. There is no markings in the HUD for the scan zone, but what it is is a very wide scan with guns. 60 degrees, so 30 degrees left, 30 degrees right, 20 degrees total elevation. So I'm going to draw roughly something like that if you can see my mouse cursor, a kind of letter, big letter box. If I roll, it's space stabilized to the horizon. And if I use my TDC, I can actually move that letterbox around. And you can kind of see, if I pause there, maybe it's better to visualize it in a B-scope. It's scanning from there to there in azimuth, there to there in elevation. So let me try showing you that. It's kind of hard to get used to. It'll be really useful if you can see it in the HUD. Right, so I'm going to go and try and find the baddie and get the baddie. Okay, it's just over there, look. Again, it's not immediate. It will take a few seconds to find him, and it's got him. And then I'll get my gun symbology, and that will be in a different video. So that shows the F-15E front seat, and these are obviously front seat modes because they need the HUD. Super Search and Super Search movable. Bore sight mode, long range bore sight mode, vertical scan mode, and guns mode. Go and shoot stuff down and have fun. Goodbye.